snow for Valentine's Day. And that's going to linger as we head into the evening and into the night as well, especially to the east and southeast. Out west, we'll get a few more flurries ahead of our next chance for snow that builds in for Thursday. So we're quite done with this yet. Lows tonight for what it's worth in the teens. Highs tomorrow largely in the upper 20s to low 30s. A second round of snow develops out west and then pushes eastward as we go later into the evening and overnight. We'll talk about that. We'll go through the rest of your generally quiet seven-day forecast coming up in a little bit. But until then, first to four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group. Killaland News, first at four. Having your car broken into despite taking all the precautions. The message Sioux Falls police want to send. Plus, violent crime from underage perpetrators is on the rise in Minneapolis. How police are trying to deal with underage offenders. And later, Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day on the same day. How often Lent and the holiday of love come together. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. Former Attorney General Jason Roundsburg stood in front of the South Dakota Supreme Court for a disciplinary hearing this morning. The court is deciding whether to temporarily suspend Roundsburg's law license over his court conduct before, during, and after the fatal crash that killed Joe Beaver in September of 2020. Roundsburg spoke on his own behalf and stuck to a story that he never saw Beaver that night. We're going to have much more coming up from the hearing, and that's coming up in the next half hour and later tonight on Kettleland News. Sioux Falls police are trying to solve a pair of car break-ins in the city. Now this one was captured on camera near 41st and Ellis. A red car pulls up, someone gets out. Uh, they're going to try the locked handle and then uh, the person breaks open the window. We believe that they were probably trying to steal the car, but were not able to. That's when they ended up leaving and, and drove away. Coming up on Kelloland News at 6, find out what other message police are trying to send by sharing this video. All right, let's uh, get to the other story everybody is talking about today, and that's the return of snow to yeah, Kelloland. We now. just had a crew uh, come into Sioux Falls from Pier, and they said it wasn't very good on the roads. No, I completely believe that uh, with the moderate to at times heavy snow that's been banding through portions of central and east central Kelloland. Yeah, roads are not all that great in a couple of areas, so you will want to keep that in mind as we get into the beginning of your evening commute. Well, here is an example of what I'm talking about. There's our camera in Chamberlain to kick off this hour, and we are not getting very good visibility there at all. In fact, this is what we're seeing in terms of snow totals as of 4 p.m. Central time. I'm here on leading the way, just a shade above four inches of snow. St. Lawrence to Fairpoint and to Hayes as well, all at four inches apiece. 3.3 for Spearfish, Custer at three, Hill City 2.7, Brookings a little over an inch, Murdo at two inches exactly. These numbers will be updated as we go through the evening and into the night for that matter. And then we'll just get to do this all over again as we go into your day on Thursday. More so Thursday night into Friday, though, as we watch that next round of snow. Speaking of snow, Oh, there's Lake Preston as well. They are getting in on some moderate snowfall right now in Kingsbury County as uh, some more banding continues to set up shop there. Temperatures holding in the 20s and 30s in many locations. There are a few outliers, and by that, I mean Yankton at 41 and Spencer at 49, still barely hanging on to that warmer push of air. But compared to where we were yesterday, notice the difference. Anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees colder compared to yesterday, and that's not even taking into consideration consideration the fact that it is getting a little bit on the windy side out there as well. So we are going to continue to watch these uh, darker shades of blue from Watertown to Huron, eventually headed over toward Brookings and Madison. They'll pivot down to the south and east. Sioux Falls hasn't gotten on this yet, but that's the key word. I think we do get to that later this evening and into the first part of your night. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Thursday's opportunity for snow and the rest of your seven day forecast all as we go through the hour. Thanks, Adam. There's been a rash of robberies and violent crimes in Minneapolis. Police say they're investigating more than 40 reported over the weekend. They say a majority of the robberies happened at gunpoint and kids are behind most of them. Tuesday, police arrested three young people after a carjacking near downtown Minneapolis led to a chase and a crash on the city's north side. Reg Chapman spoke to one of the victims and has more on how police are hoping to deal with underage offenders. And just boom, uh, in a second, you know, it can, it, your life can change completely. 
Melanie Olson had just parked her car outside her uptown apartment Thursday night and began walking towards the door when... Um, I heard a car come up behind me and stop abruptly, so I went to turn my head and there was a gun to my temple. And they asked if there was any money in my purse. I said no, and they took my purse and my keys. I just let everything go. In shock, she says she did what came natural. Um, and then I screamed in the middle of the street for a good two, three minutes. People drove around me. Um, People weren't helping me. I think everybody was afraid. And so my neighbors came out and called the cops and, and helped me. When police arrived, she learned she was one of seven robbery victims Thursday night alone, all robbed at gunpoint, some assaulted. I'm thankful because I'm still here. Um, it could have been so much worse. My stuff can be replaced, but I can't. Melanie is speaking out so others know what is going on in several neighborhoods across Minneapolis. I feel like they're young and I feel like they, they don't take into consideration what they're doing to other people. It's like a game. We had 46 violent crimes reported over the weekend and 70% of those are robberies. Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara says those robbery numbers are being driven by juvenile offenders. MPD's proactive units, as well as investigative and intelligent components, are trying to identify the young people involved. We need real consequences for kids that are out there you know, uh, putting a gun in someone's mouth to rob them of property. That's outrageous. O'Hara says he suspects that three young offenders arrested today were part of a bigger crowd from this weekend, a pattern that Melanie hopes has stopped and one she says will not control her life. I'm trying to still live my life with love and understanding, even though I'm traumatized, um, I, you can't live in fear. Reg Chapman, WCCO News. Over the past year, robberies are up 40 percent in Minneapolis. Chief O'Hara says most are concentrated in the 5th Precinct. The uptown area near the lakes and northeast neighborhoods have been hit as well. The Union County State's Attorney and his office have withdrawn from the proceedings in a Dakota Dunes murder case. Attorney General Marty Jackley's office will now oversee the prosecution of Alfredo Castellanos Rosales. Castellanos Rosales is charged in connection with the murder of Jordan Beardshear. She was found dead in her Dakota Dunes apartment last April. Court documents indicate that the state's attorney is stepping away from the case because other obligations and then the caseload of his office we're going to cause, quote, issues with being prepared to meet the obligations of the case, end quote.